Good morning, everyone around the world. Welcome to Discover SAB Business Objects BI 4.3. Super excited to have a fantastic guest from SAP join us this morning and want to introduce who will be bringing the content, the presentation uh, with everyone here today. So first, uh, we've got Pauline Lancaster, Senior Presales Solution Engineer here at GB and Smith 360 Suite. Over 12 years of business objects, uh, both in consulting as, and the last three plus years here at uh, 360 Suite. And of course, the guest of honor, who almost needs no introduction at this point, uh, Gregory Baticcio, Director of Product Management, SAP Business Objects Web Intelligence. And then of course, myself, uh, Nathan Crook, Senior Director of Sales at G GB and Smith. Uh, 13 years in the business objects world, and so happy uh, to be talking about the newest, latest, greatest uh, innovation from the business objects world. Uh, so as we get into this, of course, there are always some pre-informations uh, for everyone uh, to get the most out of the presentation. There is a questions area in the go to webinar control panel that we've got uh, the ability to have you guys interacting with the webinar as we move along please uh, enter those questions uh, we'll do our best to get to each and every one um, there will be a q a session at the end because there's a lot of content uh, that gregory wants to make sure that we we deliver all of it and if for some reason we can't get uh, to your questions, we will certainly be following up afterwards with answers for you. Uh, additionally, we will be sending you the recording, uh, so no worries there. If for some reason you aren't here today, uh, sad not to have you in person, but um, not to fret, you will be able to listen to this. And finally, uh, there will be an exit survey. It allows us to make sure that we're doing a good job for you guys, so give the second um, very short, uh, you know, 30 seconds at most, uh, just to let us know how we're doing and if we can do anything better uh, to support all the business objects folks around the world. So, with all of that said, uh, let's move in to the show. Next slide. Let me, yeah, let me switch over to and switch over to Gregory here. No. Sorry, I need to All switch right. over. So 4.3, that's okay, 4.3, while, while we're getting Gregory uh, uh, presentation rights, uh, you know, 4.3 has been a, a murmur, really. And for those that haven't been paying close attention, um, you know, I'm having conversations with business objects customers all around the world on a day-to-day -day basis. And frankly, the story around business objects still in the minds of people is that, oh, you know, SAP isn't paying attention here. Uh, you know, where is business objects going? Is it going to be here? Is it going to persist? You know, should I be investing? Should I be uh, creating and innovating in this area when it just doesn't seem like SAP is? Well, the truth is, uh, thankfully, that they have taken major strides in the direction of <clears throat> helping the, the well, in my humble opinion, the best business intelligence solution out there um, to grow in the marketplace and to persist in this world where we have hybrid analytics, both cloud and on-premise, <clears throat> or even hosting in the cloud and optimizing those things. So um, really pleased today to dig into some details and let Gregory show us yep. what's coming. Gregory. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Nathan. Can I get the presenter right, please? And those that can share my screen. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Nathan. Uh, so I'd like to show you my screen. I'd like to show you the monitor. Can you see my screen, by the way? It should pop up nicely Coming now. Through. Yes, Coming through. Coming through. Yep. Just hit presentation mode and you're good. Uh, what do you see? Do you see the presentation mode or do you see a full screen mode? I see the presentation um, along with oh, the next slide. 
Yeah. Okay, so let me do a small modification in my setup. So I really apologize for this. PC screen only, here we go. And now, Here we go. All right, perfect. Take All it right, away. thanks a lot. Thanks for your patience. Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome again. I'm really happy to share with you very good news. Really, um, and I would say it's not, well, this is almost the world premiere of the next uh, release we're going to deliver to you, the Business Objects BI Further 3. And I have many, many, many things to share and to let you know uh, what you can expect into this release, which will be really, really nice. Uh, before we m I move on, the legal disclaimer, uh, everything I'm going to share with you should be in the version you're going to get, but things can change uh, as usual, that's the legal disclaimer that we usually display just to let you know that uh, we can modify things without any notifications. Uh, before we start, my very first message, SAP is committed to continue to invest into the on-premise BI suite, and the Fodder tree is here to prove you that uh, we're going to innovate in your favorite BI platform and into your favorite web intelligence tool, uh, the reporting, your favorite reporting tool. Uh, we're going to prove you this, we're going to ship the Fodder tree, and we have many other things to propose you right after the Fodder tree. Okay, before I start the introduction, uh, before to know a little bit more what you are using today, let's uh, do the first poll. All right, so just for some information for everybody on the line. We're going to share these results as well. Um, want to get a sense of where everybody is. Um, where are you in your BI journey with business objects? 4.0 or older? Looks like we've got a couple out there. Uh, SP4, SP5, 6 or 7, and we're getting some good engagement here. Uh, this is going to help everybody understand where we're going all right and it looks like we've leveled out all right i'm going to close this poll and share the results so gregory take a look here uh seems that we've got people pretty well up to date in for the most part okay very good very good that's a very good news because for you if you are really already on the 4.2, the 4.3 will, will, will be really straightforward because for you, it means that it will be uh, an update and not a migration. So you will benefit easily of all the new innovations you're planning to you. Uh, this slide is just to let you know uh, when the 4.3 is going to be released. So we recently delivered the 4.2 size pack 7 last February. The BI for the tree, the first build, the first, uh, let's say, setup will be made available by this, the end of this year. So Q4 2019 to get your hands on the very first setups of the BI for the tree. We plan to do a general availability release. So we call this the GA version, which will correspond to the BI for the tree size pack one mid 2020 let's say around uh, may june 2020 for the general availability of the new bi 4.3 and once the bi 4.3 will be released and out and available for all of our customers uh, we will support it up to 2026 meaning that it can be more than 2026 and between the ga and the end of the maintenance of the photo tree, we will of course, we will of course continue to deliver innovations in uh, subsequent service pack. So service pack two, service pack three, service pack four, etc., etc. 
and uh, you cannot exclude to have another uh, another versions of your BI platform after the further three, but that's another story, and I will be more happy to discuss this later in the future. But for you, what you have to know today, first build, first setups, end of this year, general availability, mid-2020. Okay, what can you expect inside the Photo Tree? Many things. Uh, we had three pillars uh, for this Photo Tree. Uh, the first one is all about hybrid. So, how, how you're going to be able to reuse what you have created, developed today on, into your on premise deployment with the cloud, specifically with SAP and Cloud. User experience. This is all about the new innovations we're going to add into uh, the interfaces inside the Fodder Tree, and you will be surprised here. And last but not least, enterprise readiness. This is all the cumulative innovations uh, you're going to 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 get. Uh, this is related to how to smoothly update or upgrade your BI platform, uh, or to support uh, the most recent data sources, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's start with the first one, hybrid. What can you expect with hybrid? Uh, before to move on and to show you the details, uh, let's do a quick poll number two and number three. Please, Nathan. Okay, so here's the first one. Okay. So besides, uh, so we just wanted to find out besides business objects, um, are you using any other analytics solutions? So Power BI, we know a lot of customers have needs for other solutions. So Tableau, Click, Cognos, or if there are any other, um, you can put that information in the in the comments and the questions. Um, that would be interesting to know. Okay, looks like we're getting okay. some answers. Okay, so I'm going to close this here. Thank you very much. Okay, and okay. just to uh, just to quickly share the results. So, looks like uh, most most customers are if they're using something else, it's Tableau. Um, Power BI is not far behind, and then we've got 25% that are using something other. So, um, would be interesting if you guys could share that. Um, so I will close this. Okay, back to you, Gregory. Okay, right. so we got it. I was just going to launch the the the. Uh, oh right, the second uh, additional poll to to kind of give us some insight around it. Yeah, there we go. So, are you planning to move your business objects landscape to the cloud hosting in 2019? A couple of options here. Um, this has been an interesting topic in conversations lately. Um, you know, are you planning on replatforming? Are you taking the database as well, keeping the database, et cetera, et cetera? Um, this seems to be a way of taking action uh, to take advantage of cloud while also leveraging the existing landscape. So we're getting some good engagement here. Still ticking up. Let everybody get their opinions in. All right, so it looks like we've leveled off. I'm going to close this one and share the results. So, by and large, no cloud strategy is the strategy at the moment. <laughs> okay, thanks, Rod. That, that's very interesting. Uh, information uh, for me and the team and for you as well I presume uh, 360 suite okay let's move on so hybrid hybrid this is everything that we would like you to um, uh, to help you to reuse things uh, with SSE so the first thing you're going to improve is the live universe connector uh, you might already know that uh, since several months now SAP Analytics Cloud can access and consume all your existing universes so UNV and UNX as part of the BI photo tree we're going to deliver the live universe 3.0 which consists in the following improvements first of all greater 
performance for you and your company if you want to use SSC on top of universes. Improvement number two, uh, you'll be able, for example, to leverage data level security. So everything you have defined into your universes, such as, for example, um, uh, business security profile will be fully supported and leverage, leverage, leverage with this technology. Uh, thing number three we would like to propose as part of the look 3.0 is a better support of the SSC uh, capabilities. Uh, there is some difference today depending on the type of data sources you are consuming live with SSC, for example, live on ANA or live on BW. Uh, support more native SSC capabilities compared to SSC live on universes. So we will close the gap with the live universe connector 3.0. And of course, uh, this uh, Live Universe 3.0 come with uh, this um, uh, uh, huge uh, differentiator, which is every time you leverage a live access, your data, your data never leave your corporate network. They stay in your corporate network behind your firewall, even if you are connected to SAP and Dix Cloud in order to consume your own premise universities. So that's really a strong differentiator uh, uh, for this technology. Another thing you're going to get uh, with, with BI 4.3 is the ability to consume all your existing web intelligence document. For this, we're going to introduce a new concept that we are named the web intelligence data model. So what it is, I'm going to explain this and show you why we have decided to make it in a flu site. But the idea is you are in SSC, so in your software as a service solution, SAC, SSC, and uh, your web intelligence, all your web document will be visible and you will be able to consume them to create something else. So that's the ability to reuse all your existing web intelligence documents and the information stored in it, whatever, whatever the number of queries you have or variables you have created to build something else. Another thing which is more related to the BI platform is the hybrid user management. So uh, we will deliver a, a system for quasi domain identity management APIs that will let you easily onboard your existing on-premise users to the cloud. So like this, if you want to propose SSC to your end users, you will not have to recreate all your end user community in SAP Analytics Cloud. You will be able to use this technology to uh, provision SSC with your existing users and user groups, and you will be able, your, this end user created so in SSC, will be able to use it to access uh, uh, their on-premise uh, information and data. Another thing which we, that we will deliver, which is tightly linked with the BI platform, is the Analytics Hub integration. Analytics Hub is a kind of uh, cloud portal where end user can access it to understand the type of information they, are, they can uh, consume and access. Today, to set up Analytics Hub, you have to go in Analytics Hub and to create a tile with all the information requested that will point to your on-premise uh, content. We would like to, to, to reverse the experience, meaning that once you are into the BI platform, and you will have set up a link between your SAP Business Objects BI platform and SAP Analytics Hub, you will be able to say, I want to declare or push this document, this document, and this document to Analytics Hub. You click Apply, and what it's going to do is going to set up Analytics Hub correctly with the right Type the right metadata that will point to your on-premise artifact uh, in one shot. So this is a kind of wizard that will help you to leverage SAP Index 
hub more easily without having to do to recreate everything from scratch in SAP Analytics Hub. Okay, that's all for the hybrid announcements you are planning. So before to start uh, the user experience sections, let's do another poll, the number four, please. Nathan. Okay, so we were just curious if anyone, if you all were familiar with SAC, the SAP Analytics Cloud, um, which was what was just discussed. Uh, maybe some of you are using it, maybe some of you have trialed it um, or looking into it. Okay, so whether you're familiar or considering it um, or haven't have never heard of it, Okay, so I will close this gotten, and it looks like, um, you know, people are familiar, the majority of people are familiar, um, but want to see what the features are, and then, um, you know, some probably still getting, want to hear more about it. Okay, I will close okay. this. Okay, thank you very much. Once again, very interesting uh, feedback from you. So. Uh, now let's start may, probably the, mo the most interesting part of this presentation, which is a new user experience you're going to get inside the BI 4.3. Uh, and for this, I'm going to show you some mock-up of things you go you're going to get. So the first thing you're going to get is a new, a brand new BI launchpad. So that's not something really new because we, we, we have already delivered the uh, BI Fury Launchpad since the 4.2 Service Pack 4, but with the BI 4.3, this BI Fury Launchpad will be your, your unique and new BI portal. And it will look like the one being displayed on the screen today. So the, an important message here is that as part of the BI 4.3, you're going to get only the new BI Fury Launchpad and not the classic BI Launchpad. So the proposal is the following one. It will be a modernized user experience. Uh, it will be 100% compatible with the existing content and authorizations. So everything you have done in Fodder 2 will be fully supported. Uh, the new B BI Launchpad Fodder 3 will be fully on parity with what you have today meaning that uh, everything you can do today in the BI Launchpad, you will be able to achieve the same into the BI 4.3 Launchpad. Uh, no question about that. Uh, we will deliver some scheduling and publication announcements uh, as part of it, and you will sh we, will sh we will deliver an updated BI workspace. Uh, the experience will be rejuvenated uh, 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 as well. So. Uh, a brand new BI Fury Launchpad, that's you, and it will be your new entry point to access all your existing BI content, uh, so to view, but also to create. And inside this new BI Launchpad, you will get a brand new Webby client. So two objectives. First of all, a rejuvenated user experience, so it will be one client for the web and the desktop for all your viewers and all the designers so meaning that uh, the experience will be consistent wherever you are uh, uh, meaning that if you are using the web versions it will be exactly the same as the desktop versions with the same capabilities and the experience will more or less the same one that you have uh, discovered thanks to the new Webby Interactive Viewer that we have uh, shipped into the suite since the 4.2 Service Pack 4. So you will get the viewer, but also the designer. Uh, it will be on HTML5, so if you really like, touch ready, it will work on all modern devices, the reading experience and the designer experience as well. And it will be fully on parity with what you have today. So uh, no differences in terms of capabilities. It will be exactly the same. 
uh, one important point here, only the interface is new, not the WebB content, meaning that this new WebB client will be fully compatible with, with all your existing WebB intelligence documents. You will be able, if you decide to update a platform to BI 4.3, to view and update or create uh, or update all your existing web engine documents. That's really important and that's the objective. And if we do that, uh, we could have done that inside the existing experience, but we wanted also to simplify uh, the workflows. So for this, uh, you will get a light menu bar, no double ribbon. I explained this in a few seconds. A new formatting panel to ease the formatting of all your web intelligence document. A new build panel when you want to create a table and a chart. The experience will be really, really simple, you will see. And new contextual widget in addition of the right click. Because when we did a study regarding this new interface, we found, or you tell us, you told us that the right click is your the primary action used to interact and to create web intelligence documents. And all together, this user interface enhancement will unlock your end user's autonomy and unlock self-service reporting. That's really an objective we have with this new web intelligence client. What does this look like? So let me show you the reader that uh, you might use today. So this is more or less the web intelligence interactive viewer that you delivered in for the, since 4.2 size pack 4, but not exactly. Uh, you have the vanishing toolbar at the bottom. You have the same menu with more or less the same action, save, undo, redo, refresh data, filter, drill. Plus something has changed. You have added back the tabulations for the report. Uh, in the web interactive viewer, we had we have a drop down list. So starting BI for the tree, we have decided to add back report tabulations. If you have more than one report in your web intelligence document, another thing you might have noticed is how are you going to access the designer capabilities? It's really easy. You see it. Um, this. On the top right, it lets you know that you are in the reading mode, but you might have guessed that if you click on it, you will get a drop down list that it lets you go to the designer. And if you click on it, if indeed, you will go to the design mode and the designer will look like this. So all the contextual, the non contextual action will be at the top. So no double ribbon, save and do redo, access your data insert table, charts, analysis, if you want to filter, create a variable, plus if you want uh, to go to the next page, etc., etc. And the two new panels I've just mentioned. So here you have the list of available objects, plus the new build panel where you can find uh, your dimension and measures assigned to the block selected. And the current block selected is a table with a new widget for all the contextual actions. So that's a new designer. So now I'm proposing, I'm propo I propose you to go one step further and to see in details how it's going to work. So I'm going to use some mockups uh, that are quite old today. And the things I would like to, before to show you the mockup is, the mockup I will here to illustrate the new uh, use uh, interface concepts that you will get into the new designer. They might be naive, but really what I'd like to let you know is that uh, Webby, the way, uh, the way it is today in our projects, we can the Webby in 4.3, it really looks like this, meaning that the mockups are really identical, or the, the products, the builds we are developing, really look like this today. I'm not going to show you a live demo of the product because it's little, it's, it, this is still a little bit buggy, but with these mockups, you get a really good sense of what you're going, you're going to, sh to deliver to you. So once again, this is my starting point for my series. This is the reading mode. So if I select, the reading mode, I get the drop down list. I click on designer. If I click on designer, I will enter and start 
the design mode. In the design mode, I get my non-contextual action at the top. I get my list of available objects on the on the right with a list of blocks composing my report. If I select my table, if I do a right click, I will get all the contextual actions that you already have today. That's the same, but with a different uh, maybe order and new icons. And another way to get the contextual action is to do a click on a table to get the small widget on the right of the table here. And if I click on the three dots in the widget, I will get as well my contextual actions. If I click on properties, that's a new panel that you have introduced in Photo Tree. You will get the new formatting panel, which is contextual as well. So if I select my table, I will get in the context of this table all the formatting actions I can do for on top of this table. And this panel is in two parts, so that's the build panel. If I click on the structure mode, I will immediately see all the objects used to feed the table. So that's the list of dimension and measures used to build this table. So that's the main concepts you were doing that you have introduced in the new webby for the tree, into the new webby for the tree designer. So let's do a practical use case. Let's say I create a query and I want to manipulate a, a block thanks to the SEO interface. So let's do something uh, uh, really common, which is to create a query so that the eFashion universe is. So th this is an overview of the new web intelligence for the tree query panel. I select a bunch of objects that I use to create a to build a select data statement. I execute and I'm inside the designer mode with the result of my query in, displayed in the main table. That, that's a classic workflow. So let's do some interactive actions on this table. I'm going to select the table. Then I'm going to display the build panel. I scroll down to see the list of all the objects used inside this table. I'm doing a multi-selection of the different objects. So as you can see, everything I'm doing in the build panel, I see the result of my actions in the corresponding table. Meaning that if I do something in the build panel or if I do something into the table, I will see immediately the result uh, reflected in one or the other side, depending on where I do this a the action. So typically what I want to do here, I want to delete the columns that I don't need in my table. So I did a multi-selection in the build panel. The widget has appeared and I'm going to click on delete. What I'm doing. And indeed, I have deleted the selected columns. And of course, my new table is selected and in the build panel, in the feeding part and the columns, I can see that I have only four objects in my table, year, line, quarter, and cell revenue. Let's move on. Let's select a column. I did a right click on my column year and I want to set year as a section. I click on the section. Here we go. A section has been created on year. The section is selected and as you can see, in the build panel, I can see that the section has only one object, you. That's the way it's going to work. Let's select back the table. Uh, once again, I can see that my table now has only three objects, line, quarter, and third revenue. Let's click on lines. The widget has appeared. Let's click on break and have created a break on the line dimension. Let's do a quick overview on the result of this last action because this is quite important now. I have applied a, a break on the object line by selecting the table in my report canvas. As a result, I still have three objects in the build panel 
But if I look precisely in the build panel on the object lines, one icon has been added that reflects my actions. The break icon has, has, been, has been attached to the line's dimension. Guess what? This is the way you're going to introduce back slice and dice into web extensions for the tree. Every time you're going to do something on an object into a table, directly in the build panel or directly on the table in your report canvas, if I apply a sort, if I apply a filter on a dimension, if I apply a break on a dimension, if I apply a sum, a cost, uh, a sum on a dimension, this kind of actions will appear immediately in the build panel as an icon. So like this, every time you're going to select uh, a, a block in your report canvas, you will immediately understand the way this table has been created. So that's really uh, uh, slice and dice, but slice and dice modernized to fit into the web engines for the tree designer. And you will have more innovation of this kind into Webby for the tree. So that's all what I wanted to show you to explain you the main UI uh, improvement you're going to get into web engines for the tree. But that's not only the main things you're going to get. Let's move on. I mentioned in my first part that you're going to get a new concept, the web engines data model. So what is it? That's a new concept for the people who want to share the, data, the work they are doing inside the web document. So let's assume that inside the web document, you have four queries, four data providers data query or data provider number one, number two, number three, number four. The data providers have been synchronized, or if you prefer, they have been merged into Webby. On top of this, on top of that, you have created several variables. And what we will be able to do, thanks to this new innovation, it is to say that I'm going to select some objects composing each of these web data providers. Let's say that thanks to these four data providers, in total, you have um, 50 objects, 40 dimensions, and 10 measures and variables. You will be able to say, I would like to share only the variables and measures, and uh, only the dimensions, measures, and variables that I effectively use in my report. Let's say it represents 20 objects, 15 dimensions, two measures, three variables. So you will be able to do this. And if when you will have done this, you will have created a web data model that you will be able to share with your colleagues. Meaning that you will prepare the data, create a query on top of Oracle, create a second query on an Excel file, create another query on another database, which can be HANA or BW, merge everything. You get your bunch of objects. You add as many variables as you want. You said, I would like to share everything or not. I would like to share only the objects that I would like my end user to consume. And I do these selections and I create a web data model. Once we have created the data model, you're able to do three things. The first thing, I already show it to you. The web data model will, will, will be visible with, uh, from uh, SAP Analytics Cloud, and SAP Analytics Cloud will be able to query and access a web data model, which will remain on premise. Second thing, you're able to export this web data model as a query or the web service or document as web service. So that's a web service that any third party application will be able to view, access, and consume. Thing number three, you will be able to create a new web document on top of a web data model. And this changes everything. Why? Let me explain to you. You will be able to create um, two categories of users. Or maybe you have the need. You have already the situation. When I want, when I talk to customers and I told them, why don't you use more web in your company? They say that, okay, the reading mode, that's fine. 
my users can get it quite easily even with all the new interaction you can propose to them. Regarding the design mode, it's more difficult because the classic web designer is quite complicated to understand. So first thing we did in photo tree, like I showed it to you in several minutes ago, we have a brand new web designer, which is super easy to use, first thing. Second thing, companies are telling me, okay, even if you have a super easy web to use, creating a query is not easy. Meaning that the query panel is so powerful that you don't want to propose a query panel, you don't want to put the query panel in the end of all your end user community. So here comes the web data model. It can help you in this scenario because you could have a business or a power user in a specific department that will be able to create all the queries, so create data providers. It will be able to merge all the data providers. It will be able to create all the custom variables that your end user need. And all together, it will have validated. It will be able to share the newly created web data model. And on the other end, you will have end users, classic end users. For them, you give them the new web designer, super easy to use, and there is even uh, an innovation for the tree that will help you to make it even more easy to use. The only thing you will have to do is to know how to select a web data model. It will be super easy. It will be, it will be just to create a new web document, select a web document, select a web data model, that's it. And once they will have done these three clicks, they will get all the preparation done by prepared by the business and power users. They will get immediately all the data corresponding to the web data model in the web designer without the need to create a query, without the need to learn how to use the query panel. Once they get the data, they will be able to design a report create and share the analysis via a web document. So that's the proposal, the use case that we have with a brand new innovation in photo tree, the web data model. On my side, I have someone that create a web data model, share it and update it. And on the other side, I have all my end users community. We just have to learn how to access web data model and to create a web document on top of it directly. They will get the data, they will consume the data. Okay, that's the web for the tree, uh, data model. Other innovation that we have for you, uh, we will introduce back the interactive analysis mode in for the tree. So it's not a new innovation, it used to exist in XI 3.1, but you like to improve this interactive analysis mode in for the tree. What it is, what it is. So today, I'm pretty sure your community is divided in two. Again, you have the people who are, uh, who are using the web interactive viewer, and you have another population who are just the report creators. So the mass are the following one, 80%, 85% reader, 50, 15% creators. But what I'm hearing from you is I would like my end user to be more uh, independent in not only in consuming and analyzing the existing web intelligence document, but also in updating and why not creating their own web intelligence document. So for this, you're going to propose you back the interactive analysis, which is all about proposing a mode which is between the strict web intelligence interactive viewer and the full web designers. So you will be able to define the scope of capabilities and uh, functions that would you would like to your end user to see and use. For example, if you want to propose to your end user who, as of today, are only able to open a web document, interact with input control, export to Excel, and give them the ability to take a block, remove a dimension, add another dimension, add a sum, create a custom variable, take a table, 
turn it into a bar chart, turn the bar chart into a line chart, being able to replace this brand new block, uh, replace this new block uh, in the WebB document, you will be able to propose this kind of interface for them. And it will be super easy because for this, uh, it is all about in the brand new user interface to say, I would like this interactive analysis to look like this and that, meaning that you will be able to hide these capabilities or display specific capabilities and you will choose what your interactive analysis, interactive analysis mode should look like for your end users community. Other things we are working on, this is everything related to uh, new chart tasks and capabilities. So you will get chart in cell. So imagine you have a table and inside a table, inside a specific cell for this table, you will like to insert a small line chart, a small bar chart, this kind of things. We call this micro chart. So this is part of, this is part of the photo tree and some things you are working on. Uh, you will be able to create trend lines in your chart super easily. Uh, it's just a matter to select or unselect the specific option we create a chart. Tray chart is the ability to say, I have a pie chart. Okay, the pie chart is done like this. And to introduce a new thing for every chart existing in Webby. To say, I would like this, uh, to look at this pie chart, but, but, but per region. So in this case, you add the region dimension in your chart and this pie chart will be repeated in uh, for all the values composing your uh, region dimension and zoom and pan is some easiness to interact and to navigate inside your chart so all the innovation i just mentioned are part of the plan for the further tree and I'm super excited of the great things you will be able to achieve with them. Another thing uh, we're going to propose you, uh, because we will have a brand new web agent reader and designer in HTML5, it will be now really easy to consume all your existing web agent document with your favorite devices. So for this, we will work with the BI Mobile team to integrate the Webby, the new Webby Interactive Viewer for the tree as part of the BI Mobile applications. What does it mean for you? It means that now, once we will have done this integration, all and every existing Web intelligence document will be accessible and consumable with all your devices. You will be able to use the browser for your favorite laptop. You will be able to use the BI mobile application for your favorite tablet, iOS, for instance. And you will be able to use the BI mobile application for your favorite smartphone to access and consume all your existing web intelligence documents. And what does it mean for you? Parity. What you will be able to do into the, into the viewer when you are using uh, the Webby Viewer client on the laptop, you will be able to achieve exactly the same on all your existing devices. The small differences compared to the previous technologies that you are using, if you are aware of, uh, it will have to be connected. Okay, uh, that's all for Webby. Everything related to Crystal, we will have some uh, Crystal report announcement as well. So we will have uh, a 64 bit version for Crystal report client and servers. Uh, Crystal report team plan to support the new Japan Hera uh, type font. And uh, Crystal report enterprise uh, is planning to support some BI platform updates and new data sources. And of course, uh, it will integrate inside the new uh, BI Launchpad publication, but also the new BI Launchpad uh, Fury, Fury like. So that's all for the new user interface. So here come now uh, the last section of my presentation. This is all the innovations you're going to get to do and to deliver uh, for the enterprise readiness. 
So, uh, we will do continuous uh, improvement for installation and deployment and to ease the installation pro process. For example, enhancements related to silent install, uh, tool to support the cache moveable, etc., etc. We will continue to improve our support of SAML 3.0 with a simplified SAML uh, configuration and support. Uh, we'll do some updates for the administrators, tools like the BI admin compete, monitoring and permission management. Uh, the audit capabilities uh, will be improved to better track uh, user updates like login fillers, authentications, etc., etc. Uh, we'll have enhancement and publication uh, enhancement, so enhancements for the publication and scheduling. Uh, the first enhancement we're going to get is uh, the experience, because today these kind of capabilities are used for Web and Crystal. We have different way to use uh, the same capabilities. So now we have exactly the same experience for Web and Crystal when you're going to create a new scheduling or a new publication. And you have uh, the support of uh, what needs to be supported in the area of uh, security and product standards. So that's uh, something which is mandatory. Uh, something related to new data sources, for example, uh, we will support, we are planning to support Snowflakes as a cloud data sources, but also Google Big Query. Okay, important things uh, that you have to know. Product not cheap with 4.3. So as you might know, uh, Adobe will stop to support and distribute Flash Player uh, by the end of December 2020. So we, this will have some consequences for the 4.3, meaning that we do not plan, we are, we, we are planning not to deliver SAP Business Object Dashboard, so Excel Suite, and SAP Business Object Explorer uh, inside the folder tree. They won't be available with the folder tree. So if you want to know more about this, please look at this uh, knowledge, page, knowledge base article. Uh, we explain you uh, what, you're going, uh, what is our strategy for dashboard and access use, what is our strategy for Explorer, and same thing for the BI widgets. Important things for you as well, uh, because you might have noticed already uh, Java, the Java one time, uh, to get an update of the Java one time, you have to pay now. Hopefully for you, uh, if you want to stay on the 4.2 stack, uh, the DHTML classic web is almost on parity uh, with the Java applet, and inside the 4.3, we will get the brand new web engines 4.3 which is in HTML5, and it will be fully on parity with what you have today. Okay, so that's the last slide uh, for me today. So once again, uh, with web, with SAP, for SAP Business, Business Object BI for the tree, we work on three uh, pillars. First one, hybrid, so improve SAP Analytics Cloud, live connectivity on top of universe and all your existing web editions documents. Simplified SSO, single sign, sign on configurations, and user management across cloud and on premise platform, and an improved integration with SAP Analytics Cloud with uh, the BI 4.3 platform. For the user experience, so you have a new Fury like BI Launchpad, and it will be your unique and default portal in the BI 4.3. We have one HTML5 Web Intelligence client for the web and the desktop. So by desktop, you have destined a new web intelligence which client. And for your consumer and designers, you will get a new web intelligence data model and cumulative enhancement in several areas of the BI suite for Webby for Crystal. And for the last pillar, enterprise readiness, uh, you can expect many things in the area of scheduling and publications and into uh, the inst in for the installer and, dis and, deploy and deployment uh, capabilities and so on. So that's all I wanted to share with you today. 
I was really happy to share with you so many details. And I think the next time that I will have a webinar with with you and the 360 Street team, I will do a live demo of the brand new uh, BI for the tree. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you so much uh, for the time and the knowledge there, Gregory. Really appreciate that. Um, Pauline's going to take back. We've got a little bit more uh, in terms of content to share with you guys. So those of you who know uh, the 360 Suite team, uh, then you're probably very familiar with the different ways and the reasons why we like to partner with Gregory and we like to support and uh, make sure that we're getting out the information around Webby, around business objects in general. But uh, as you're approaching 4.3, as you're approaching SP7, 8, or 9, or any of the innovations that are coming along the way, a lot of our customers are already taking advantage of faster migrations, better audit around your system, um, ensuring that your uh, the quality of your data and all the information uh, that is going out in the reporting is the same uh, from version to version. Uh, being able to adequately uh, give information around executive ROI, you know, all of this money we're spending on business objects, how are we doing with regard to the investment that we're making, uh, regulations, a lot of people leverage business objects to do regulatory reporting or information that has to be reported on with regard to regulations. Uh, these, along with cloud migrations, uh, normal migrations, these are all aspects of uh, the business objects world that are uh, things that can be enhanced, things that can be delivered um, through leveraging both 360 suite and business objects. Uh, we, we simply um, add the layer to help make things even easier and to sort of dig into that area we've got uh, another poll here so how can we help optimize your business objects environment oh no it got taken down did it go away yes hmm okay no. <laughs> i don't know how to bring it back um it, it can't come back no so nope um it cannot so in the comments so if any of those topics are on your uh on your docket you know with regard to regulations uh speeding up migrations and upgrades uh regression testing any of these areas where you're looking to get better you're looking for ways to improve you know, make sure to uh, type into the uh, questions area and we will definitely be able to follow up with you um, on that front. This is, uh, you know, in the area of how can we help. Um, so to keep this moving, we're almost to the end of our time here. I wanted to get a show of hands. There are a lot of people here around the business objects world. Are you going to be attending Sapphire? So I want to see, uh, are you or any of your colleagues going to be attending Sapphire? Uh, we're going to be putting on an event um, during a lunch uh, on the 8th that we can reach out with an invitation. If you're wanting to you know, introduce anyone um, to other customers around the business objects world, this is going to be a great opportunity to network and to be able to connect with other people that are doing things with um, you know business objects and other technologies business objects itself um, there will be a number of uh, opportunities to meet folks like gregory and the rest of the business objects team uh, provided that they have time to uh, stop in but the the idea here is to be able to give everyone an opportunity to step outside of the of the uh the conference center it'll be just outside and uh to get some fresh air and to be able to network and um, get some value out of the sapphire um aside from just the uh, presentations that you can attend so it looks like 
we still got some people voting here. But ultimately, we want to make sure that you guys are finding not only value from your um, from the business objects tracks, but the analytics tracks as a whole. So we're going to be publishing a an analytics uh, schedule that would be easy to consume and give you all the options that uh, that we think would make for a really good um, track as far as uh, adding these to your schedule there. So make sure you're on the lookout for that uh, coming up over the next week or two. And I'm gonna go ahead and close this. It seems like we've gotten to the top. And it seems like a, there's a number of people that don't know if they're gonna be attending yet. And of course, I'm sure a lot of people not able to get down to Orlando, but you know, thanks you, thank you to those who said yes, you know, if whether whether we connect there or not, it's good to see people going. It's definitely a valuable use of time. Um, and definitely it can be a very valuable use of time. But you know, I would say that, you know, take take control of your experience, you know, really dig in, find your schedules, pick your uh, who you want to see this is a great time to connect with all the different people around business objects um and the executives so i'm gonna hide those and that brings us to questions so i know that we've come to the top of our time but uh gregory if you're up to it there's a ton of questions and maybe we can hit uh, some of the highlights here and, and follow up, of course, afterwards with those that we don't get to. Yes, of course, with, with, with pleasure. So uh, do you want me to go from the top and go to the bottom yeah. and look at? Yeah, the... sure. That'd be great. Yes, of course. Okay, let's. I'm going to, to look at the top. So let's have the first questions. Uh, okay, maybe uh, does a timeline mean 100% on-premise will not exist, be supported after 2026? Uh, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> it means that we will continue to support your on-premise deployment. It can, first of all, uh, the first uh, maintenance period you are planning today for the photo tree is up to 2026. We do not exclude to extend the maintenance period after 2026 plus we do not exclude to deliver another version after the photo tree. So I think in a nutshell, uh, uh, I'm, I'm answering your questions if you want to stay and if you want to continue to use your on-premise deployment. Today, the focus is for the tree. So what I can tell you is we will support up at least 2026, it can be more. Between now and 2026, things will evolve. We continue to evolve. Uh, and we do once again we do not take you to, to continue the story after for the tree. Uh, tac, tac. We feel SAP is not focusing enough to compete with Power BI and Tableau. Uh, maybe that's a perception. For this, I really encourage you to have a look at Sapentix Cloud, and uh, we have great announcement to share with you. Uh, for example, doing Sapphire. So please stay focused with what you're going to deliver uh, inside SAP Analytics Cloud. You have great innovations inside this um, tool as well. Uh, and moreover, Web for the Tree contains, I, I hope for you, uh, that, the, that you recognize this uh, quite interesting, uh, very good innovation for you. Uh, so the questions, will we be able to use the web intelligence data model for on-premise as well? Yes, like I said, like, like I shared with you, the web data model is here for two things, three things. The first one is to allow SAP Analytics Cloud to access Webby and its web data model. Thing number two, to create a document of the web service or query of the web service by using the web data model. Thing number three is to let your web intelligence on premise to consume another webby uh, document to consume an, uh, the, the existing web intelligence data model so two times the same questions yes uh, so consuming webby data model in sap analytics cloud will we also be able to consume webby docs associated within the on-premise bi platform 
yes, that's the purpose of the Webby data model. Okay, we have customizations in the BI Launchpad with Fury coming in as default. Can customization still be done? Okay, so for this one, um, uh, yes, you will be able to do customizations into the BI 4.3 uh, Launchpad. Uh, we have uh, even great things to propose you because this, these kind of customizations we will introduce a new interface where you, where you will get your end on every area of the BI Fury launchpad and you will be able to customize it the way you would like to. So it means that you will have to create from scratch the new, brand new customization as part of the BI 4.3 launchpad because as you might have guessed, because we ship only the new BI Fury launchpad, uh, what you have done in the BI launchpad classic will not transition to the BI 4.3. So you'll have to look at these new uh, capabilities and to 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 customize the new BI 4.3 portal. Okay, here is a question. I think this is related to the new web designer. How will end users drag and drop objects to the report? Do they need to go to the design mode and drag and drop? Okay, yes, uh, drag and drop will be, uh, of course, available into the Webby designer. And indeed, if your end users want to do drag and drop, they will have to do two things, either to enter the full designer, so the complete designer, the designer with all the capabilities, or you will have to propose to your end user the interactive analysis mode where you will have decided that your end users will be able to access the list of available objects to, to see the objects composing their web document. And of course, if they can see the panel list of available objects, they will be able to perform a drag and drop. Uh, with Okay, will changes to the security model be required? Can the existing model be used as is? The question is, yes, definitely. Uh, that's, uh, once again, for the three is an update. This new Webby look and feel is quite familiar to SAP Antics Cloud application. Is it the same thing? It looks like, yes, it is on purpose. Is it the same thing? Uh, no, uh, we are just using the same Fury elements inside Webby. So the experience, the look and feel might be the same, but each product product will keep its own way of working, its own characteristic, meaning its own workflows. But you're right. This is on purpose that we uh, that the Webby, the new Webby for the three designer, look like. Because for you, that's the opportunity that if you get familiar with a new 4.3 designer, it will be super easy for you to go to SSC. Uh, I'm looking. Uh, can we expect similar better performance on your web reports when viewing them on 4.3 versus 4.2 SP7? The experience should be the same or even greater because for the for the tree you have a complete stream called performance where the loading of the webby with the web engines document in for the tree will be boost so it should be even better compared to for the two sp7 at the opening and i expect also at the consumption, meaning that when you will interact with your web document at the view time and at the design time. Uh, will, what will be the ideal connection to S4 ANA? 
So as part of the BI 4.3, we will have a brand new technology to consume uh, uh, back queries and HANA views. Uh, we call this the, uh, the Fly of, Firefly connector or the INA driver, I-N-A driver, which is the same that um, uh, Lumira designer is using as well as SAP Analytics Cloud. So you can expect uh, great things in this area as well. So will for the tree include two inner or outer joint capability when merging data from two data providers to queries? Yes, but not for the GA. This uh, capability is in the backlog and we expect to deliver the uh, inner join, outer join, full outer join in Webby in one of the very first service pack after the 4.3 GA. It will be probably for service pack 2 or service pack 3. Uh, oh, so many questions. Uh, okay. Uh, can you secure a Webby data model? Can you update, refresh your Webby data model? Can you merge data from a Webby data model with additional universe queries? Uh, th so that's three questions, and to the three questions, the answer is yes. You can secure a Webby data model, you can update, refresh a Webby data model, and you can merge a Webby data model with additional queries, such as an Excel file or another query on top of Oracle, for example. Really, are a ton of great questions here. Yes. Uh, multiple random column. Uh, new apps available to start with specific support, for example, the pending tab and links to all the report. Uh, I don't know which one to take there. So, <laughs> okay, a, so let's. One that's duplicated. Will Webby be able to consume SAP HANA CDS views? Uh, Anna CDS views. Webby to consume Anna CDS views, Anna CDS. Uh, I think that's the case since for the 2SP7. So CDS views correspond to the X calculation views. Um, I might have it here, but I think the answer is yes since for the 2 size pack 7, or we are working to work on something that will support it. Uh, or oh, that's already the case since for the two size pack seven. Uh, I can I will double check for most for some of the questions here. Mm -hmm. uh, do Webby which clients still exist in for the three? Yes, uh, it will be a 64 bit version that we are going to deliver. Same thing for Crystal Report and regarding uh, Webby Webby tangents which client for the three. Uh, the experience the look at field will be the, exactly the same one that you will have uh, for the web. Uh, can we upgrade to for the three and still support existing dashboard Excel use until we ultimately replace which will be our Lumera? Uh, I think uh, uh, I will have to check, but I think no, you you won't be able to see your Excel use dashboard objects in for the three. Uh, is there a SAP NetWeaver integration into 4.3? Uh, uh, if you are related to SAP uh, BEX queries, yes, of course. Uh, this kind of data sources is fully supported and it will be even better with a new inner driver in 4.3. Any enhancement related to the CMC, such as being able to export info to Excel? Uh, unfortunately, no, the CMC will look uh, capabilities will, will be exactly the same that you have today in 4.2 size pack 7. Uh, are there any plans to release native SAP Universe connectors for Power BI Tableau? The answer is no. That's the plan today. No, definitely no. Are there improvement in geolocation chart, deeper integration with Google Map? So today, uh, for this one, uh, uh, no, uh, but you can use uh, visual extensions to leverage uh, Google Maps. So we have some sample 
on the web to achieve this, or you can go and talk to some of our to some of our partners such as uh, Galigeo or or Santigon, who propose both. They both propose a plugin for uh, S3 Maps or Google Maps for web inside Webby. One of the slides say BI Launchpad from 4.2 SP7 will not be included in 4.3. Is it true? Should we even publish BI Launchpad to current users? So uh, it means that in 4.3, the Launchpad that you have, that you know today, which is the version 4.2 service pack 7, will not be delivered in 4.3. It means that it will be replaced by the new interface, which is a BI Fury Launchpad, which will be on parity with the 4.2 for the 2SP7 launchpad, but that's a new experience. Behind the scene, uh, the services, the, your sizing remain exactly the same. I just want to let you know. The security, will, what you have defined in for the 2 size pack 7 will be fully supported. Your folder structures will be fully supported. Your sizing will be exactly the same, etc., etc. Only the interface is, is new, are new. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, okay. Can you restrict users to enter the design mode? Yes. So, what would be the argument for customers who stay on B who want to stay on BI on premise? and upgrade instead of going entirely to SAP Analytics Cloud. Um, reporting, operational reporting. Uh, uh, the best tool on the market, I would say, is still web intelligence. So I think that's a strong argument. Going to SAP Analytics Cloud, for you, it means that uh, today, it means that you will have to recreate uh, stories for the same use cases. On top of universities, of course, even if this uh, capability already exists today. Uh, what is the next step, next SP after Service Pack 7? Uh, we will have Service Pack 8, 9, 10, etc., etc., but with no innovations. Because now we have started the 4.3 projects, innovations are inside the 4.3 projects. Okay, some of, of our users use Microsoft Power BI when it comes to their visualization dashboarding requirements and building reports by themselves. They are forced to download data via WebE reports to feed their Microsoft Power BI report. Is a new WebE, will this type of requirement be much more easy to achieve? Uh, I hope yes. That's the reason why we have this new WebE designers, really easy to use and to put in your end of your end users. We have ton of great visualizations already today in Folder 2 Size Pack 7. It will be more easy to use them in Folder 3. So we hope that the dashboarding use cases, when, we are, when I say dashboarding, I would say light or quick dashboarding, I would say Webby is really capable in this area. Uh, I did several webinar, other webinars on these subjects. Uh, if you want to do a quick or light dashboard, Webby, in, I would say 60-70% uh, of the case, is uh, is a good tool to achieve this. For the other 20-30%, it's not really a dashboard, it's more an application that you're looking at. So in this case, Webby is not the cool, so go and use something else, of course, uh, a true dashboarding tool. But for the use case we are describing here, I would say that Webby for the tree has a good value proposition in this area now. Will the IDT UDT client tools be 64 bit in 4.3? Yes, thanks to remind me this question. So IDT and UDT will be part of the 4.3, and yes, it will be a 64 bit version for both uh, universe designers too.
Are there any potential plans to enable use to consume piton or air within the sub environment? For example, SSC has connectivity with air. As part of the photo tree, uh, we will propose you a sample. Uh, the first sample we propose you is to leverage Python, Python statement within Webby formula language. Yes. Next step would be to leverage air uh, as well. What are system requirements for Fodot 3 compared to BI Fodot 2 size pack 7 system requirement? Do you expect a significant squid? No, it has to be the same. It will be the same. Fodot 3 for uh, companies using Fodot 2 SP7 today is an update. Is the universe UNV format still supported in BI Fodot 3? Yes, we have no plan to stop UNV or to stop to deliver uh, universe designer tools. They will be both part of the further tree once again. Okay, will the old BNH pad still be available? No. When does BI for the tree coming for general availability? Uh, mid 2020. Uh, the more I answer questions, it seems that the more <laughs> I'm having questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and we, uh, I wanted to mention I'm, I'm, that we're going to do a wrap up, um, you know, a, a, a wrap up email with all the questions and answers, and then also follow up individually with any of those that we couldn't get to directly. Okay, uh, that's obviously support Anna Yaki. Yes, uh, I'm surprised you're asking this. That's where before the tree support Anna Yaki. Yes, we support this since uh, many years now. So, yes. Fodo3 will support an hierarchy like Fodo2 already does it, does this today. Uh, will IPCS iShot going to be natively supported in Fodo3? Uh, no, uh, no, no, no. We have, we will have some hack to, to, to enable some kind of uh, IPCS we can feel, but not exactly the same as what SSC is proposing today. What about free and SQL in new Webby? Yes, we support free and SQL in, inside the new Webby, and for the two already support free and SQL statement. Uh, uh, there will be new connectors with Webby to external data like free and SQL statement. Um, uh, like I said, we, okay, we're going to do a great thing for all, everything related to connectors to connect new data. Today, uh, the connection server, which is a technology used to connect to all relational and all of data sources that you have today, is based on API, the proprietary API. These APIs are not public. You're going, you're going to make the API public in front of the tree, which means that if you want to create an API to connect to uh, cloud data sources, you will be able to build your own API for you. Plus, we will deliver some samples. Plus, like I said, we will support, uh, by, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, Snowflake and Google BigQuery as part of the further tree. So that's the way, that's the strategy we're going to take for everything related to uh, new data sources. And once again, free on SQL is part of the tree. Free and SQL, free and SQL is already part of the further two. Awesome. Uh, I think uh, I think we can wrap this and handle. Uh, oh, you know what? There is one more question that just popped up that I've actually had from a number of clients. Is 4.3 going to be the earliest um, for support to, to direct connectivity with Snowflake? Yes. Yes, today that's, um, that's, uh, that's our plan. It should be, yes. The, the plan to, Snowflake is planned to be supported with, with 4.3, not before. And uh, if you want to consume snowflakes today, uh, let's be frank, that's possible. Uh, I think there is some, already some paper on SAP community network that describe how to enable this. But the fact is, even if it already works today, this is not supported. That's, that's the point. Okay. But to get the supported versions, you will have to wait for the three. 
And if you want to consume any other uh, cloud data sources, uh, Google BigQuery, data sensory. Today, that's already possible even with the 402, for example, service pack server. There is a paper explaining how to achieve this, thanks to the Simba driver, for example, which is free. It works, but it is not supported. And if you want to uh, consume any other exotic cloud data sources, if you go and buy a specific um, uh, driver available on the market, it might work already with Webby or, if, or with the universes, but it might not be supported. Okay. Uh, awesome. Well, thanks so much for all the time. Uh, gosh, we're 26 minutes into to, uh, plus time, overtime, if you will. Um, and that's awesome. We still got 144 people out there. It's amazing. Um, it just proves even more so that uh, business objects is king in the in terms of the business intelligence platform, and people really want to continue to leverage it. So I take that as a very good sign. Thank you so much, Gregory. We truly appreciate the, the time and the information and the insights here and look forward to seeing the demo when you're ready. Yes, thanks a lot. Th thanks, thanks to all of you. Uh, if you are going to attend Sapphire, I will be there. So please don't hesitate to come and to say hello and we'll be more than happy to show you live the product because we have internal builds that are already running. And uh, yes, we have great things. Uh, for you, for on-premise and inside Webby. The story will continue in the coming years, so stay tuned. And thanks a lot for uh, the 360 Suite team for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to share with you all the great things we are preparing for you. Thanks a lot. Beautiful. Have a great day, everyone. Have a good day, yes. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.